panic destroys supply chains. Finely balanced and optimized for the stable supply of products with actual end demand that is also stable and highly predictable. But suddenly, something happens, panic spreads, and ultimately, it's the cause of costs and chaos. Hi there, I'm Lawrence Gartside, management trainer and consultant in business operations, helping you and your team to level up your business operations fundamentals. Toilet roll. One of modern life's rather underappreciated luxuries. Eat sheet made from tree fibres from several different species from across the world. Its ingredients made from refined in dozens of hugely complicated giant chemical factories, processing and packaging plants, and then transported across the country for its one moment of glory. But in March 2020, panic hit the Western world. When COVID-19 hit, no one knew what was happening or what stuff we needed for lockdowns, except that everyone was buying toilet roll. Despite COVID not having any effect on the actual amount of toilet roll required, when everyone heard it was running out, everyone thought they too needed to stock up. People rushed to the shops and bought all they could find. Many shelves were bare for weeks and immediately emptied after every delivery. And here begins the vicious chain of events of a panic upon a supply chain, slapping inventory, logistics, supply chain and operations managers across the world into a frenzy. Even when nothing has actually changed with the ultimate end consumption or end customer demand. The supermarkets desperately order more to keep up with customer purchases. Distributors order more, hiring extra staff on huge overtime rates. The manufacturers urgently ramp up production, ruining their efficient and stable production schedules, delaying other orders, running expensive extra shifts, causing chaotic emergency discussions with their own suppliers to come up with more materials now, now, now. Costs spiral up throughout the whole supply chain. Yes, a few end customers do genuinely run out as everywhere is sold out, all while the actual end consumption of toilet roll has not changed a bit. In fact, as the crisis passes, the supermarkets all refill and everyone realises that they don't have to start improvising by washing rags in vinegar after all. But the damage is done. Worse, actually, it's still only half done, as this bullwhip wave still has to shoot back down the supply chain. Now, everyone's houses are full of bog roll. No one needs to buy any more for ages. Shops don't have anyone to sell more to, and so they cancel next month's orders with the distributors, who were just getting going in response to the panic surge busy loading up to handle the boom in demand, and now they are landed with lots of bulky inventory they can't shift and have to pay extra to store it. They, in turn, cancel their orders with the manufacturers, knowing that they now have to sell their own mountain of inventory before they could possibly need any more. And what about the manufacturers? Their staff all need paying whether the hugely expensive factory is making stuff or not. If it keeps making, it has to do so inefficiently, slowing down all of its machines and then pay extra to store more stock at a time that everyone else already has a big stock anyway. At every location throughout the whole supply chain, costs continue to grow. Slowly, things work themselves out again. But all those extra inventory and supply chain costs have to be swallowed. Each link in the supply chain takes a hit, and ultimately that means customers too. One way or another, maybe many months later, after the big stocks have sold out, the price of toilet paper in the supermarket goes up. Because many of those costs, caused by that needless panic, however understandable it was in times of fear and uncertainty, ultimately come back to the end customer too. 
These news-catching events of panic make for great case studies, bringing the world of supply chain into the spotlight. Immensely complicated, intricately managed and unglamorous to some as they are. But it's really just an extreme example of insight into the far more common silent pests of all supply chains that form the backbone of what all supply chain, inventory, logistics and operations managers should be working to combat all the time. Uncertainty and variation, information delays, imperfect visibility of end actual customer demand and the multiple uncommunicative and separated decision tiers, along with improved forecasting and demand management. If you want to learn more about the fundamentals of inventory management, supply chain, logistics, business performance improvement and operations management, then check out my next video or come over to my site rotenstraining.com and have a look at my library of online video training courses. Just remember, don't panic and crack on. <laughs> <laughs>